Hello and welcome to Dublin for the 2017 Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championships from the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club. We're here at Ireland's leading gaming venue for a true extravaganza of poker. This year promises to be the largest and the most exciting version of the annual poker festival to date. We have a truly international field with players from all over the world. Day one action was fast and furious with the field being cut from 216 players down to 54 semi-finalists competing for the top prize. We lost some high profile players and some well known members of the club on the day as players tried to accumulate a good stack to give themselves an advantage going into day two. The field was then cut from 54 down to the final nine who will compete at the final table for the top prize money. Players were cagey not to go out too early on day two and everyone was keen to hang on to their stack and slowly grow their position. We had some all-ins, some bad beats, some incredible strokes of luck, as well as some great play. Our unlucky 10th place finisher was Adrian O'Donoghue who just missed out on the TV table. The final 18 players were in the money and well done to all of the prize winners at this year's festival. Will the 2017 winner be from Ireland or another great poker playing nation? Let's see how the cards were dealt. Let's meet our final nine players. In seat one, we have Eamon Delaney, a recreational player from England, whose favorite player is Daniel Negreanu, so we might see plenty of action from Eamon tonight. In seat two, we have David O'Kelly from Dublin. David's a regular player here in the Fitzwilliam Casino. His biggest cash win to date is 18,000 euro. In seat three, we have Willow Connolly from Dublin, who plays her poker here in the Fitzwilliam Casino, and her favorite player is our very own Podrick Parkinson. In seat four, we have Sean Prendival, a professional player from Dublin, whose biggest tournament win to date is 200,000 euro, so big tournaments are nothing new to Sean. In seat five, we have Trim Nikolai from Albania, who's another regular player here in the Fitzwilliam Casino and would be hugely popular winner. In seat six, we have Rory Brennan, another professional poker player from Dublin. Rory was down to two big blinds on day two and fought his way back to the final table. In seat seven, we have Audrius Dog Valarigis, a Lithuanian player whose largest win is 10,000 euro and is another big fan of Daniel Negreanu. In seat eight, we have Dogradas Ringaila, a Lithuanian poker player who's short stacked going into the final table. So let's see if he can turn his luck around. And our final player in seat nine is Neil O'Reilly, an investment consultant from Ireland, whose pet peeve is time wasting. So the action should be fast and furious. One hundred thousand euros in the prize pool of this party poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship, the bones of which are going to be given away at this final table. I'm Jesse May, joined by Parg Parkinson, and Parg, uh, a lot of money and a couple good players here at this final table. Yeah, it's a it, pretty interesting dynamic. It's kind of what we were expecting at the start of the week. We've got uh, Sean Prendeville and Rory Reese Brennan representing the pros here, and they're taking on seven of the club players. So it's a it's a perfect battle. This is the experienced pros against experienced uh, amateurs. Well, you know, here at the Fitz, I mean, they have a very, very active tournament scene. So you've got guys on this table who have who have won 10 or 12 uh, tournaments at this very club. So they'll be feeling comfortable in this room. Oh, oh of course they will. You know, and they, they do have a lot of experience between them. You know, it's not that this isn't David against Goliath by any stretch. Blinds are 15 and 30,000. There's about 10 and a half million in chips on this table. And uh, we've got a pot brewing between uh, Audris Dog Valicious and uh, Sean Prendeville, who's your chip leader. It looks like Audris has raised the fives early on, Parg. And uh, Sean's called in the big blind. It's gone check, check on the flop. Oh boy, that's a full house for Audris. I'm guessing uh, Sean may have a stab at this. He is a very, very aggressive player, which uh, makes him one of the top players in the country because his judgment is usually impeccable. I guess he's thinking he could take Audris off the ace high, if that's indeed what Audris are raised with. But yeah. uh, he's going to um, he's going to get a short surprise. He's actually drawn dead here, Park. No way for Sean to win this hand. All he can do is lose chips. And uh, it'll be up to Audrey. That's a very nice call, isn't it? He's just going to let Sean hang himself on the river. Well, when you're playing against a guy like Sean, it's a, it's a pretty good policy because he, he will bet with absolutely nothing. And you don't want to lose him. 365,000 in the pot. Audrey's has only got twice that back. And uh, 
I think Sean, Sean is, is gonna firing get, again. Yeah, he's going to get a wake up call here, Parg. He's going to get a wake up call. Sean's doesn't. bet 90,000. Oh, this doesn't look like a guy would have survived. <laughs> no, does he it? doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a guy with a headache. <laughs> Sean's a bit experienced, but this man looks miserable. And oh no, I raise. <laughs> I think I've heard that one before. Yeah, yeah I was thinking of folding. <laughs> <laughs> Sean does. Sean doesn't waste any time. An early setback for the chip leader. Now he's got plenty of chips to play with, but he won't want to have too many pots like that, Parg, if he means to go deep at this final table. And I can assure you, he does. <laughs> Sit six fold. Sit seven race to seventy thousand. It's an early oh, raise eight. from Audris with the ace jack nine, and Doggertis has put about oh geez six about twenty percent of his stack in here, Park. He's the short six stack six uh, at the table, young Lithuanian. Well I think he's decided he's not going to get out of the way here, Jesse, six and he's five. going to play a just more or less any playable hand he gets. Prendival's picked up the ace queen in the big blind, and this that, that was a lump of blue. He's oh, pushing this ace queen. Well, that's the advantage of the way Sean played the uh, the king queen okay. against the house of fives because these guys are. It's very hard to put Sean on a hand because once he gets involved, he'll use his judgment and he'll quite often be in there in his bare feet. So. When you talk about the, the, the pressure and the stakes of this tournament, aside six, from, seven, from Prendeville and Rory Brennan, I think this winning this tournament would be the biggest lifetime cash for everybody else at the table. Yeah. And uh, now we've got Doggertis. He's about an 18% chance uh, to win this hand, which means 82% of the time he is going to be walking. And this is a big moment for him, these five cards of fate. No help there. Looks like only the jack. Is it going to get him out, or we're going to have lost our first player at this final table? Yeah, well, he was very short stack, Jesse. He didn't really have any any choice but to get his money in with anything that was half playable. Two picture cards was loads. I'm here with Douglas Ringaila, who's unfortunately just bust out the final table. He's the first player to exit, but you did incredibly well to make it to the final table. There was plenty of entries, and you got down to the final final nine. So you must be quite proud of yourself. Yeah, good, good. So you'll be back next year, hopefully. Yeah, I bet. That's incredible. Thank you very much for talking to us. Now back to the final table. And the circle gets smaller, down to eight, Parg. And Sean Prendeville's lead has increased. Seat three, fold. Seat four, fold. Couple of people be looking to six ladder five, up on this race. tournament, Parg. I mean, if you 000. if you can outlast three or four of the players at this six table, you make you make six, yourself seven. I don't know yeah. seven eight thousand euros. It's I mean, a huge amount of money. Well, this is where the professionals six, nine, have a, a bit of an advantage in that they're all thinking about the win, whereas a lot of the club players, this is a huge payday for them, and uh, they'll be quite happy to move up uh, one spot at a time. One, I mean, you talk about and you can't blame them. No, absolutely not. But talk about a regular trim Nikolai who's just raised this he's, up with the ace five. He's here oh. every night of the week. He Jesse. has he won 17 tournaments in this very club and only he had three house. seconds. He's either the greatest heads up player the club has ever or seen. Or the best fantasist. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two. But uh, top pair here for Trim in a three way pot. The blinds are both in. And uh, Trim has moved all in. He's got top pair and the two will give him a straight. You can hardly blame him. It looks pretty good. And uh, he's got Eamon locked up. We don't know what Dave O'Kelly has in Sit the big one, blind. Sit two, yeah. call. But he called quickly. He says he flopped it. It's, it's a straight park. He's, fl he's flopped the nut. Six, seven. Trim is drawing nearly dead. Well, I... Blind, Jeez, I think he's got about a 1% chance here. Not much more. Hey, look, he's got a 1% chance. <laughs> Ace or five would what? be his best card here. That's it. And that is it. Well, if one guy at this table knows about uh, the ups and downs of tournament uh, poker, it is Trim, who plays uh, a zillion tournaments here a week. Very experienced local player. Trim, you did absolutely nothing wrong. This is the most nah. unfortunate hand. Tell me what happened. Nah, I was uh, raised pre flap with ace five, the collapse, and uh, got two callers, five high in the flap, and 
the check, so make a move and like got cut. And he As in, like, he flapped us straight, 6-7. Yeah, he six, flapped seven. Us, yeah. That's extremely unfortunate, but you played so incredibly well. And so you'll be back next year then. That's awesome. Please, Definitely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm joined here by Paul Howard, the Head of Marketing here at the Fitzwilliam Card Club and Casino. Paul, thank you so much for talking no to problem, us. Kate. How are you finding this year's festival so far? It's fantastic. Uh, we have 246 players playing this year, so it's great to have that many people here. Uh, it's our first time over 100,000 euros prior pool, so wow. massive prior pool for us, so it couldn't be happier. So tell me, Paul, what have you done differently this year as opposed to previous years? This year we have a new sponsor, uh, Party Poker, Kate, have come on board with us this year and have been very supportive of the show. We have a new commentator with Jesse May. Uh, we're bringing Jesse over from Denmark to commentate with Porter Parkinson this year. So that should be an interesting duo. And we're back on Airsport again, Ireland's leading sports channel. So we're happy with the package we put together for members this year. So what makes the Fitzwilliam Poker Festival different to other poker festivals in Ireland or in the UK? Well, our festival, we have a combination of professionals and amateurs. They come from all over Ireland and the UK and Europe to play. And we also hold it in the club here in the casino. So we're the biggest casino-based poker tournament in Ireland and that adds a level of uniqueness to the event. Seven players left. A lot of history in this room. And in this card room, Parg, the Fitzwilliam has been a poker fixture in Dublin since 2003. And, uh, and so has Wilhelmina Connolly. Um, she's poker royalty as far as yeah, Ireland yeah, goes. Yeah, her mother won the Irish Open Championship and then her... Um, Uncle won it. Now, I've, so, I've just found out about this. Obviously, I've known about the stories of the great Jenny Haggerty for years. I didn't realize that it was uh, Willow's mother. Um, that is some of the best and, poker and, training and, and you and can Christy get. And Christy Smith was her uncle. And Christy Smith was her uncle. But they used to call uncle. them the Northside Mafia because, <laughs> you know, you could play a, a poker tournament in Dublin, you know, 20, 25 years ago. There might be seven out of the same family at a four-table tournament. Now, this is a big moment for Willow because she's got a decision. Uh, now there's an, a raise under the gun from Sean Prendeville. He's got aces, but um, she's not to know that. Uh, he's been raising quite a bit. Audris has moved in with the Kings, and... I think well, Willamine is in an awful lot of trouble here. She'd probably be, uh, uh, move all in to, to isolate. isolate. Yeah, and uh, she's a bit unlucky that the Aces are sitting right behind her. But And it is Sean Prandeville who she knows may have anything from nothing to uh, worse. <laughs> oh, you can see when she got snapped off by Sean, he said call instantly. Willow knows it's trouble. Now she has to spike. Uh, and, and Audris as well. We've got two players all in. Sean Prendeville could take this tournament five-handed in five cards, Parg. Can you feel the cameras behind me Poor Willow. She, oh, and there's a king. Big fist pump from the Lithuanian. That's even more trouble for Willow if she wasn't in enough already. She's going to be... She still had a side pot. Nine on the river would have kept her in. No, but she's done absolutely nothing wrong there, Jesse. She made what, what I think is the right move, and I assume most people would. Willow, you played extremely well. Tell us about the last hand, because you didn't really do anything wrong. Yeah, the, the last hand, I really didn't want to get involved, but the, the lads were pushed in a position. There's only seven big blinds, and I pocket nine, so I'm racing, and hopefully I'm racing. I still have chips behind, so I have to push this off behind coming in with overcards, and unfortunately I ran into aces, aces and kings. Well, you were the only woman flying the female flag up there at the final table, so as far as I'm concerned, you should be extremely proud. No, I'm not proud. <laughs> I feel like I'm as good a player as all the guys that play. I don't really consider. No, you're absolutely right, I agree. Yeah, I think actually if you look at all the, even just to loan the two ladies there, that cashed, you know, the, the ladies are the ones that win all this year. And then there were six, one of whom, Park Parkinson, is going to win 30,000 euros yep. and the title of Party Four Poker fold. Fitzwilliam Poker Champion. Four fold. Sean Prendeville has led this thing from start till present. You know, this tournament is great, Jesse, because it, the buy-in was 450 euros, Three. which was a, Nine. big enough Six. to get the professionals Seven. involved Four. and small enough to let the, the club players qualify on the cheap. Oh. It's perfect. Nine call. Looks like Rory Reese Brennan has raised this one to ninety thousand in a oh, mid to late <coughs> position with a pretty raggedy hand. Three players. 
Neil O'Reilly. It's not a raggedy hand in Oakland, does it? <laughs> oh, there's a King Edison. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Neil O'Reilly in the small blind and Eamon Delaney in the big blind. And uh, it looks like Eamon has just opened shoved here. Now there was... Six. Well, he's, he's shoved for more than the size of the pot park. There was uh, around 300,000 in the pot, and he's put in 700. And you can see by Neil's face that having top pair with the queen kicker is no easy call on this spot, and it's not. It's not, but he's going to do it anyway. Nine call. We'll have to see if he's ahead. Uh, Eamon Delaney. Because Eamon got king ten or something like that. With the ace ace, oh, nice bet, Eamon. It, it was. <laughs> if we don't get an ace here, we're going to lose the UK's last player in this tournament. Hugely courageous by the Lancashire hot pot, and uh, he is now stewed. I'm joined here with Eamon Delaney, who bust out in sixth place with a great payout of €3,900. Eamon, you played extremely well throughout the tournament, but unfortunately you finished on a little bit of a bluff. Tell me about the last hand. Uh, well, I was big blind and I had A7 suited. I was beginning to get a little bit short with my stack, so uh, I called um, a raise to people in the pot and I was first to act. The flop was, wasn't a very good flop for anybody, I wouldn't have thought. 3-3-10. Three, three, um, so I went all in. Uh, got one fold, but unfortunately the small blind had hit a 10, so it didn't quite work out. So, so a bit of a semi-bluff. Really, it, yeah. it didn't pay off this time. It didn't pay off this time, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. I've had, you know, I had a good card throughout the tournament, but it wasn't too good tonight, really. And you actually haven't played in many tournaments uh, right. to date. Yeah, that's right, not too many. Okay, and so th would this be your biggest payout so far? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. See, you're quite happy with yourself. Very overall. happy. Really enjoyed it. It's been a great tournament. It's been a um, good, good, good way of learning, really. And I've really enjoyed every part of it, including the Fitzwilliam and uh, the environment, the atmosphere. It's been very good. That's it for part one of the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Stay with us for more action after the break. Welcome back to the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Let's get straight back to the action. The circle gets smaller, the stakes go up. Park, it's been a few years since I've been here in Dublin at the Fitz. This club is hopping these days. Yeah, there's tournaments every night of the week. There's two on a Saturday, and this is a great Seven move forward for the Fitzwilliam Club. They're putting their club championship Nine. in partnership with Party Poker on TV. Two this is looking to the future. Folded around at a button. David O'Kelly has announced raise. Ace Jack, a good hand for that. What do you know about this David O'Kelly part? Well, David is uh, better known in the Fitz as a cash player. He plays the one-two no limit hold'em game here several nights a week, and he really enjoys the crack. I mean, he's kind of one of those guys that the Fitz is all about. They go in and have a laugh, but he's also got a tournament record. He won the A Cup in 2015 for about I think about 15,000. So I this will still be the biggest win of his life if uh, he can come through this field here. And this is a very tough player to get through. When I look at Rory Reese Brennan, who we're looking at now in the big blind, I think it's back to when. He was a kid in 2009, the Party okay. Poker Irish Championships in Galway. He came through a tough field then. He certainly did, and he's gone on to become a, an excellent player. He's a good friend of Ono D's, who's, uh, who's <laughs> gone followed a similar track. And uh, it's also quite well known as a pot limit Omaha player. I can remember him doing very well in the, the 10,000 buy in uh, Pot Limit Oma at WSOP a few years ago. Well, he's outflopped David O'Kelly. Uh, had the lower ace called from the big blind. He's hit that six in the middle. Uh, I'm guessing, Parg, he's gonna he's gonna call this bet. You don't hit a middle pair and then just fold. Not in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you know what's good for you. It, it may have happened, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this pot is creeping up there, near a million. Ten percent of the chips in play in this pot already. That's. I think. Uh, if Rory bets here, uh, David is going to have to throw his hand away. Well, the question for David is, does he want to bet? He's taking the free card, and if Rory doesn't end up taking this pot, then I'll be very surprised. I mean, no, does I... David O'Kelly have a chance to win this with a monster bluff? 
No, I think uh, Rory knows exactly where he's at here. And unless David has had an ace 10 all along and has just hit a 10 on the river, Rory's going to win this. Check. check. Yep. Check, check. check. Rory Reese Brennan got to take that pot back to an average stack, Parg, Six. and a big danger now. Yeah, it's looking field. ominous now, the two pros, uh, Sean and Rory, are still there with five left, and they're both, they're both stacked. Uh, this is the worst nightmare for all the other guys at the table. Lines up to 30 and 60,000 par. Getting a little bit serious for the shorter stacks. But then again, they're all guaranteed at least at least fifth place money. Ace Jack suited for Rory Brennan. That looks like a raising hand. Six, He's nine, on nine, about nine, 25 big four. blinds. And it's probably the best hand he's had all day. Oh, oh my God, he's running to his queen behind him. The ace queen's got a, a big stack, 3.4 million. Nine, race, so. 330. Yeah, that's Neil O'Reilly with the three bet. First three bet we've seen in a while. And I mean, it could, what it could be difficult for Rory here, Jesse, because uh, because uh, the one guy's got 3.1 million and Rory's got a uh, just about half of that. There is a chance that he's been pushed around here. Could you see him shoving all in? I'm not sure he knows enough about Neil to do that. He's gone for the middle option. Oh. He's going to peel off this flop. And uh, you know how they say, Parg, in Ireland, anything after the flop is just a whole load of hassle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what Rory Brennan is about to have because he has top pair out kicked. Check. And uh, Park, I believe we're about to see, barring any uh, intervention from the deck, could be the end of Rory Reese Brennan. It could well be. Nine bet, two fifty. One third pot bet from. Neil O'Reilly and uh, Rory Reese Brennan. He could either call. He can't fold here, Park. He could call or bet. shove if he yeah, wants to. He might to. be trying to induce a raise from Rory. Rory's taking his time. This is a vital stage of the tournament for him. There's a bit of a lesson there, Jesse. You know, we pent at leisure. Beads of sweat running down Brennan's Check. cheek. Check running down his forehead. This is serious. He's been playing poker professionally for the guts of 10 years. And, uh, but you don't get yeah, that many situations like this. Yeah, he's a member of that Southside club, you know, with uh, his friends uh, Ono D, John O'Shea, who were the ex-Young Turks, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but not so ex. All in. Just just the biggest stack in front. Eight changed nothing Whoa. on the turn, and that all in from Neil lets Rory know that it is all or nothing for him. The deep sigh parg. If he does call here, he's only got three cards to win. Doesn't know that, of course. This is a very tough fold. Very few players could make this fold here. Well, this is a real tough spot. He's got Tom here, he's got a jack kicker. And uh, if he folds. He'll only have one million left, which is about, uh, it's less than 10% of the chips in play. I mean, hopefully he's been playing with Neil for a few days. I guess he has to make a decision. Is Neil capable yeah. of, uh, of, of bluffing here? Could he have the two Yeah, kids? there may be a dynamic here that we don't know about. They could have history going back two, three days. I, I don't know, but it, we're always thinking through all the possibilities here. And he's trying to figure out. If Neil could have three bet him. Oh, look at that face. Without a <laughs> hand. A, this is pain. It this is. is like getting burned by a radiator. Holy oh, Man, who said sitting down playing poker <laughs> was relaxing? But uh, this is this is easily <coughs> the biggest decision he's faced uh, in this tournament. Of course, we heard earlier he's come back. He was down to two big blinds yeah. at one stage on day two. Yeah, he was telling me. All the way back here. Oh that's my so God! Park, that's an amazing pass. That that's is that's world class. That is world class. That is top drawer, Jesse. Especially in a five-handed game. Right. 
So Neil O'Reilly now with a whole load of chips, Parg. Now, he's had about five wins the last couple of years here at the Fitz, but I believe this would still be his biggest cash ever if he can get one of the top two spots. And he's not alone increased his chip stack size, but he's uh, he's injured uh, Rory Brennan, which is it's a double whammy. An unusual limp sure. under to the gun from David O'Kelly. Uh, let's Neil O'Reilly see the flop for free. The bless. And, uh, we're head up in this pot. David on about 1.8 million. Neil's got more than twice as many here. I don't think he get David O'Kelly out of this pot at gunpoint. So that's it's hard enough to get him out of the box the best of times. <laughs> <laughs> that was one KG check by David. Two pair on the flop. He knuckled it back. And uh, I'm not sure if, if it was uh, KG or sneaky, but I'm going <laughs> to. I might like if I had to have a bet on it, I'd bet on the sneaky. He's uh, he's trying to induce. Induced, and it's worked. Bet. Hmm? Well, that's pretty. That is pretty clever stuff. Neil O'Reilly has fallen for the O'Kelly hook and ladder. It wouldn't be the first. <laughs> Race, 250k. And, uh, there's the hammer, Parik. There's the sledge. <laughs> Both players smiling. <laughs> I think they all did what they had to do there, so. you know, Sometimes in this game, you can, everybody does what they have to do, and one guy finishes up with the pass. And look at that. Ten would have come on the river. Oh, my God. So if he hadn't bet the turn, he'd have hit the state on the river. Oh, God, it's a tough game. It's never easy. Sit for fun. Prendeville, not the chip leader anymore, but he ain't far away. And Rory Reese Brennan down to under a million in chips. Part has only about 15 big blinds. Uh, he could just open shove here. He could just stick them all in one in one lump if he wants. He can do it either way. But this is the benefit of it. He's, he's getting from that great fold with the ace jack. He's given himself a chance to pick up two jacks or a big hand like that and get right back into it. Snap call from David O'Kelly. He's got the big slick in the big blind, and this is a flip. Her always a sp slight favorite. Yeah. Rather be the oh. guy. Oh, that's oh, a God, not one. anymore. Rory Brennan, one card away from fifth place. Gotta be a hook. Jack me up. This is good news for the rest of the players because it's one of the guys who was favored at the start of the day out. Rory, how are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm a bit gutted, to be honest. Uh, I was hoping kind of for top three or get heads up or something, especially we were all kind of even with five left. So fifth, not ideal, but just the way it happens. So still a great tournament, still enjoy myself. I really enjoyed playing the whole thing. So. But you also had an incredible fold about 15 minutes ago. You had ace jack. Um, there was an ace on the turn. What was going through your head? That must have been a really hard yeah, call. That was in hell. Uh, that was actually literal hell. Uh, yeah, he re-raised me pre-flop. And he had the big stack at that stage, and there was a guy to my left who had less than me. So he can put a lot of pressure on me because I'm trying to wait for the other guy to bust uh, before I get my chips in, you know, because you know it's, it's very valuable for me to move up one pay jump, even though I didn't in the end. But so he knows that I won't want to get too involved. So he re-raises, so he doesn't necessarily have to have anything. I just didn't think he was going completely bananas. I mean, ace jacks, like the absolute best hand off out there. If I've ace queen, I'm just snap calling because it's just the best I can have. So with ace jack, I just, I just believed him. We're joined here now with the managing director of the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club, David Hickson. David, thank you so much for talking to us. Not at all, thank you. Are you happy with how the event is going so far? No, we're delighted. I mean, it's been a great success uh, for a second year running now. So um, a lot of uh, the regulars are taking part, but also a few of the international players are coming along now. So we're really excited about that. It adds another element to the, the whole event. And David, you've done this event for a few years now. What differences are we going to see this year in comparison with others? 
Well, we, we, we sat down after last year and we did, a, if you like, a post-match analysis and decided, well, what way would be, you know, a more uh, beneficial way of, of running the event. So what we did was we restructured uh, day two and, and the final day as well. So we're hoping that the players won't feel under the same time pressure the final table tonight as they would have last year. Um, we're starting a lot earlier and we're bringing back the nine finalists as opposed to 27, which was brought back last year. So um, I think it'll be uh, an interesting evening for everybody and um, we will sit down again after this event and we'll review everything again and we'll see what we can do better for next year. Um, so we might find that nine back wasn't a success, we might have to bring 18 back next year or whatever. So we're constantly reviewing and, and developing and trying to make it better. So that would be our plan going forward. Just four players left, Parg, from a start of over 200 runners. I know, I was one of them. 30,000 euros, and uh, Sean Prendeville certainly has his eyes on that. He'd be the happiest man in the room. He'd be quite happy to see uh, Rory Brennan uh, being knocked out, even though they're friends. Nine, Button Four. pressure Six, from Neil O'Reilly. And uh, I'm starting to like this Neil O'Reilly park. He's got a very good game. Yeah, he's opened up quite a bit. Uh, once the okay. tournament started, it becomes short-handed. I like that. A little ground and pound. He's got Prendeville in the big blind. They've both missed the flop. This is one of those hands where you get to see who's got what in the gut. Well, that's a nice little pair there for Neil O'Reilly. If uh, if Prendeville takes a stab at this one, he's going to get. Oh, we we'll take a stab at it. Don't, you, <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> he's the he's the. From what I understand, he's the president of the Never Check Twice Club. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a bit like the devil fish, you check, check, and then he'll have his chips in before the card comes over. Unfortunately for Sean Prendeville, he's uh, drawing dead here. The question will be... Uh, now, that is not a terrible bluffing card, Parg. He could easily try and represent a five for a straight if he wants to go big, but is it smart? Well, I'll let Sean decide that. <laughs> he could also represent the flush. He's going to represent something anyway. Should he have to say when he puts the money into the pot exactly what, what, he, what he either has or is representing? It's kind of like calling your shot in pool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he's bet. That's, it's, this is not the easiest decision in the world for... Yeah, he's having a bit of a squirm, isn't he? I think he will call it. I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean he has to like it. And it's the face of a man. Yep. Bluffing. And he sees the good news. Queen high for Prendeville. Top peril beat that. Neil O'Reilly. Now over four million park. He's verging on half the chips in play. We could be looking at our next Fitzwilliam Club champion. Well, we are if we look at the forward at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, back on the horse, Six not the least bit surprised. Quick Six move in from Aud Oli. Audrey's dog, Delicious. And uh, Park, he's got a bit of notoriety in Ireland for what I understand this Audrey. Uh, he is currently the Irish bear hug champion. And uh, in the finals, he beat a bear, an actual bear. Two years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> All in now with the Queen Ted offsuit. Sean has uh, snapped it. He knows Audris was in uh, under pressure. Best of luck, guys. King High, good enough for Sean. That was, uh, I, w I think, what they call a math call. Well, no better man. And uh, Audris looking for the double up, anything but a king. You've won every all in. <laughs> Sean is one of those guys who's won so much money playing poker that uh, he's decided to stay in college for the rest of his life. <laughs> he's finished his primary degree and now he's gone back to. Uh, Trained to be a barrister. Race, Over 700,000 in live tournament winnings, Park, but he's won more than twice that yeah. uh, on the internet, in the online poker in. scene. One of those four. poker whiz kids. And one of the calmest guys you'll ever see at a poker table. I've never seen him get hot and bothered, look upset. Just if he loses money, he just uh, gets on with the next hand. Got Audris all in now. Threes against David's ace five. Yep, Another coin flip. flip. 
And Aldous has been hanging in all day. Yes, he's got the kings against the aces. I think fourth prize here is 9,000, and uh, even if he loses this, he'll be going home with 9,000 uh, without anything good happening to him all day. Mm. Well, this is good. Looking good. Anything but an ace or five, and Aldrich is going to have the big double up, and Babu uh, to the showers. Okay, 9,000 euros. Audrey's out in fourth. I'm joined here with Audrey's dog Valerius, who's just bust out in fourth place of the final table. Audrey's, you've had a pretty eventful day. You went all in loads of times, and it served you quite well up until now. Um, what was your thought process in doing that? Uh, maybe about two times, just bluffing. Not, not too much. All the time aces, but it's not work. <laughs> and the last hand, tell me what happened there now. I have a pair of trees, uh, people call it ace five, and the river coming ace, and I go on. And so the event overall, the festival here at the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club, would you come back? Have you enjoyed the experience? Yeah, yeah, all the time I come back. <laughs> That's it for part two of the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Stay with us for more action after the break. Welcome back to the Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Tensions are really running high, so let's get straight back to the action at the final table. Three players left, and this one's shaping up nicely. Parg, you know, if you believe that Final tables are not where champions meet, it's where champions are made. And right. both David O'Kelly, Neil O'Reilly making a strong statement for themselves to take this one down. Okay. They got slightly different styles, but uh, I like the way both of them are playing. Absolutely. Well, David has become a bit more active uh, as the tournament gets short-handed, which is what he's supposed to be doing. Well, Sean opened up that one from the button. A shove in the small blind with the King-10 from Neil. That was good stuff, and he was right. You know, there's been some great winners uh, of this tournament over the years. I mean, the top money winner in Irish yeah. poker, Andy Black, is a three-time yeah. finalist here. He got knocked out on day two. So I don't think this wasn't a tough tournament. It was tough for me to sit beside him on day one and listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> now, Andy's a great player, and he won this tournament two years ago and came back and defended last year, put up a great defense, got to the final again. And a top player. Niels raised this one from the button. He checked back the flop with the six high. Uh, I guess he's going for the, what they call the delayed steal. Let's see if this one gets through. He's got nothing. Two pair on board. Sean's winning with the jack. Four call. Well, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is some call. You couldn't get this man off a pot with a shotgun. Four check. <laughs> They're now both playing the board. Neil got there in the end. And Sean is feeling now a bit unlucky. I certainly was. It was a great call. Round and round she goes. Prendeville finding this very hard no. work, head in the hands. He can't get either player to budge. Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. Four raise, two seven five. And a little raise, small blind to big blind. You know, Neil O'Reilly's not got much, but when you're three-handed, Parg, you got to play what they deal you. Well, and when the raise comes from Sean Prendival, who's been easily the most uh, active player at the table, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you just got to fight back. These players fairly evenly stacked, and that is a great flop for O'Reilly. Top pair with Prendival having the Four middle pair. Decision time here for Neil O'Reilly. Do you call Parg? Do you raise? Do you let Prendeville try and hang himself? Uh, you can do either, but uh, letting Prendeville try and hang himself is uh, probably the, the best move. It's a bit of a machine gun. Oh, that's oh, a bad God. card for O'Reilly. I've changed my mind. You shouldn't, should never let him try and hang himself. <laughs> that's, what a card for Sean Prendeville. And what a time to check it. He's given Neil O'Reilly the rope to hang himself with. Nine bet. And O'Reilly climbing the tree. 
But you can't blame him. You know, he's played the hand to allow this to happen. Four is all well, in. Not, not exactly this, but uh, <laughs> to get John to bet the turn into it. Well, he's got to think about this, Parg, but I don't see how he can fold here. When you look at that board, there's a couple straight draws there, a couple flush draws. Well, this is the advantage of Sean's playing style, that if you're hopping in and out of pots all over the place, top pair starts to look like a royal flush. Problem for Neil O'Reilly is if he calls here I, and loses, it'll well, be I, end of tournament time. I can't see him not calling, and I, I certainly wouldn't blame him for calling. Very unlucky turn card. If he does call, he'll still have, well, looks like eight outs that they're telling us, any queen, any three. The five will work as well. But I'll tell you what, this would be a very big pass. And some would say, some would say unwise. I mean, Prendeville could easily have a worse hand here. Absolutely. Call. Nine, call. Cracked voice, but a clear call. That sounds and if Sean Prendeville can avoid the three, Thanks the five, or the queen, <coughs> we are going to be heads up. Unlucky. Unlucky for Neil O'Reilly, Parg. Third place money. And a great performance. I think he's an investment advisor. I wonder if he's thinking bitcoins at the moment, or have we missed that? I'm joined here with Neil O'Reilly, who's just bust out in third place, and he's played incredibly well. Neil, tell me about the final hand. Uh, well, I suppose it's it's short-handed, so it's always a bit tricky um, playing, uh, and we're quite short-stacked. So uh, I flopped top pair, and um, I, I suppose there's there's enough draws out there that I just thought it was worth just having a look. Uh, unfortunately, he he turned two pair. Um, so, you know, I, and what you call it, I didn't catch a, a lucky river card, so. Just one of those things? That's it, yeah. And how was your overall experience then in the Fitz Casino and Poker Club? Oh, it's great. I love uh, the Fitz. So most of my cash have come here. Um, so it's obviously, it's, it's my favorite place to play. <laughs> We started with 249 of Ireland's finest poker players, playing for a total prize pool of a whopping 100,000 euro. We are now down to the final two players, Sean Prendeville and David O'Kelly. One will walk away with the winner's prize of 30,000 euro, and one will have to come back again next year to win the big one. Who will Lady Luck shine on at the fits this evening? Let's shuffle up and deal to find out. Well, this is when it all gets serious, Parg. All the chips on the table, all the money in the middle. You know, this is what this tournament is all about. We've got one of the top guys in Ireland, one of the top guys in the world, playing the guy who plays in his local club. Now, he's no mug. He has won the ACOP a couple of years ago. He's an experienced poker player. But he's done nothing wrong here. He's played nothing but championship cards so far. Question is, Parg, what should his strategy be? Take down Sean Prendeville if you're David O'Kelly. I say try and do a deal. It might be handy. <laughs> <laughs> Flopping top pair is probably the second best option anyway. Well, and, uh, it's probably in David's interest to try and make the pots big. Because if you want to play small pots with Sean at Prendeville all day long, he will beat you. He'll beat just about anybody. So uh, David will probably try and get the big stick out to take away that advantage that Sean has. Sean bet 150 on the flop. David has check raised it up to 400 and looks like Sean's going through the three bet park. This is um, he is aggressive, to say the very least. And I guess uh, if Sean thinks he's going to take David O'Kelly off an ace here, he might want to think again. Kelly seems wedged in. Mm -hmm. And Sean is usually a, an exceptionally good judge. It's this pot's big already. We're talking about two million in the middle. What a card for David O'Kelly. Oh, my. <laughs> He's, got He's looking a lot more concerned <laughs> than he should be. <laughs> He's got Brendaville trussed up like a turkey. And uh, I'd say the best... I think uh, 
put on the brakes and Sean Prendeville are two uh, concepts that have not met the rubber. That's, uh, 850. that's how he's gotten this far Funny. in the poker world. And he doesn't intend to change now. I would say that is going to be the wake-up call. Fun. Great pot for David O'Kelly, Pargan. I think he's taking the chip lead. Oh, he's taking a big chip lead. Sean Prendeville now down to 24 big nice blinds. It's about a three to one chip disadvantage. Luckily, Parg has picked up the ace king here on the button. Good time to do it. I love the way David O'Kelly's playing this Parg. He's been steady, he's been playing his hands, and he's been letting Sean make the pace. Tuck. And tuck. Top pair for O'Kelly. I imagine he'll be firing out here. I'd imagine so. Five hundred payback. Tough enough spot for Sean Prendeville. Done, go done good to get away there after the flop without losing a chip. Very quickly. Coming up around the holiday period, Park thirty thousand euros. Pretty good for any family man. I know Sean Prendeville's a, a new daddy. Yeah, he's a baby sure quite recently. He said changing nappies is his new hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it's less harmful than all the other ones. <laughs> sure David O'Kelly's got a big family watching. 30,000 euros will put a few things under the tree. Well, it's 18,000 euros per second, so they'll have to be watching. They're looking up the Argos catalog at the moment. <laughs> and uh, to be fair, this is kind of the way Sean Prendeville has been hoping things go all the time. Uh, yeah. With both players flopping nothing and yeah. uh, him Sh trying to steal Sh the pots. Sean would be quite happy to play low ball here all day. Uh, David's uh, hit a pair on the turn, but uh, I don't think he'll be getting involved here. Well, I mean, uh, Sean's raced him, and uh, if you're O'Kelly here... Re oh my God! Park, this is genius. He's p what has he seen? Well, we're sitting here looking at the cards, and we certainly weren't expecting that. <laughs> and I don't think Sean Brandeville was. This, this could be the biggest move David O'Kelly has made in his poker career. He's looked through Prenderville's soul. Bottom pair, Park, with the three bet. Wow. I mean, if you're going to choose a moment to make a big bluff, how about heads up against Sean Brandeville? For the Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. What a move by David O'Kelly. Yeah, unbelievable, Jesse. You know, this is the club player playing the top pro, and he's shown absolutely no fear. Okay. Okay. Well, this is a time for Prendeville to get a big double up here. Just limped in with the jacks and... Oh, no. You know what they say about slow playing, Park? Yeah, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, Two bad, three Sean hundred. must be absolutely loving this. This is one of those situations where both players think they're trapping the other. Absolutely. We could be seeing the end of the tournament here. If uh, Prendeville escapes from this hand without losing the rest of his stack, sure. it'll I be can't a see miracle. that happen. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, and he's checked again. He's playing to, uh, to double up here. You could easily see a situation where O'Kelly raises, or sorry, Kelly bets and Prendeville moves all in. I mean, there's nothing out there that beats him besides a yeah, deuce. Sean will be hoping that David has flopped the 10 and he's going to get his double up here. He's about 600. Prendeville's only got 800 more in his stack. It's over! Whoa. Oh, Kelly's the champion. Deuce three to win in hand. David O'Kelly, 30,000 euros and all the glory. Yeah, and two three to win in hand. That's impressive even by Irish standards. <laughs> I'm joined here with Sean Penderville, the 2017 runner up for the poker festival. Sean, how are you feeling now? I'm happy enough. Uh, great festival, so I uh, enjoyed myself. And you must have been fairly confident going into the final table. You were chip leader with 2.7, almost 2.7 million in chips. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I was happy enough. Um, I didn't have the best seat in the table, but I was still pretty confident. Um, I've been going well for the last couple of days. And yeah, I was feeling good, but uh, just 
fell up short the last hurdle. But you were the most aggressive player throughout the day and you were Podrick's favourite to take the trophy home today. Um, so that's like a nice boost to endorsement from a professional player. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, I was probably a bit too aggressive in the end, but um, yeah, I, 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 I gave my best shot and sure, what are you going to do? After four long days of play and many ups and downs, we finally have our 2017 main event champion. And here to present the winner's trophy is the poker manager here at the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club, Denise Bushari. Thank you, Denise. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You must be all ecstatic. I'm thrilled, yeah. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was a fantastic tournament and I'd have to pay absolutely fantastic credit to the Fitzwilliam, the staff, Denise, the dealers. It was it was run really, really well. I think everybody enjoyed it. So fair play to them. Fantastic. Even if I didn't win it, it would have been a fantastic experience. It was a really great tournament and fair play to the Fitzwilliam. So yeah. your play in the final table, halfway through you started to really get involved a little bit more. Was that part of your strategy or was that just kind of how it unfolded with the cards that you were dealt? No, I think it was part of the strategy because I'm a grinder and uh, I was playing conservatively, but then when you're playing against the likes of uh, Rory and uh, Sean, you know, those guys, if you don't play back at them, you're, you're lost. And uh, no, that was, that was my strategy. And I think they didn't realize that I would play back as aggressively as I did. And I think maybe the underrated made it the old club. So that's all from us here at the Fitzwilliam Casino and Card Club at the 2017 Party Poker Fitzwilliam Poker Championship. From our new champion, David O'Kelly, and all of us here at the Fitz, thank you for being with us and we'll see you in 2018 for the Party Poker Fitzwilliam November Poker Festival. Mm -hmm.